Well, it's that gratitude guy with another special guest on the gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And with me today is uh, one of my oldest friends that I've known the longest, I should say, not oldest by any means, but uh, it occurred to me, I've known Rand about 50 some odd years, so, but don't do the math to try to figure out how old we are. But uh, anyway, uh, Rand, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Dave. Glad to be here. You bet. So what I want to know, I've got three questions for you, and uh, I'll start with, uh, what is your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Um, I would say that lately it's been trying to get away from the news feeds, the Twitter posts, the everything that's showing up has just become overwhelming. And so I've, my favorite thing to do, and it's probably a lot of people's, is to uh, read. You know, I've got tons of books on the shelf that I've always felt that, geez, I wish I had time to read more. And, you know, it, this has given me that opportunity. And like I say, the thing I like about reading is, is you can kind of immerse yourself in the subject of the book and kind of forget about what's going on here right now. Right. And, and that's a great point because in as much as this is very important, maybe unprecedented in their lifetime probably is, you, you can't get away from it. I mean, every news channel, every radio station, every TV thing, and the entire thing is totally focused on the coronavirus. And again, it's important, but I think our brains need a little bit of a break once in a while. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Great. That's, that's a very, and then catching up on that reading too, I've done some projects that I've been meaning to do, which has been kind of helpful. I kind of put them off. And now that I got a chance to, uh, you know, be forced, if you will, at the condo and, and it's nice to get those things done. So uh, excellent. Number two question. So during these certainly uncertain times, what are you most grateful for? Uh, not a surprise, but right now, I guess I'm grateful more for my health my wife's mm -hmm. health and my whole family and friends is I personally don't know anyone that has been contracted the, the disease and I'm very grateful for that. Um, it would make it tougher because I know that uh, if that happens, these people kind of get sequestered away and there's no contact. And uh, so that, you know that their lives have taken a real negative turn so that, uh, yeah, most definitely that the health of everyone here is good right now. <laughs> that is definitely, definitely something to be grateful for. I did a, a video the other day on the top 10 things you can be grateful for in otherwise a very negative situation. I was talking about the technology. You look at you and me on Zoom. You press a couple of buttons and there's my good friend, Rand, and Dave's in Seattle. Rand's in Las Vegas and a bunch of other things I mentioned there, but certainly just being grateful for your health. When you don't have your health, you don't have much, and, and the amount of people that are uh, inflicted or um, infected, rather, and dying certainly makes us appreciate that, so excellent. And third and lastly, uh, do you have a quote or philosophy of some sort that sustains you through this or throughout your life? Well, uh, many. <laughs> uh, one of probably the the one I use the most is the it is what it is. Mm. In other words, you have to deal with things as they are. You can complain about them or blame other people, but the bottom line is, in order for any problem to be solved, is you need to acknowledge that you have a problem first of all, and then figure out a way to deal with it you know what's the right. solution you know and don't be upset that you're in that situation in the first place and, and instead of looking backward look forward is where are you going to be when you come out the other end that's a good point and obviously knowing you all these years it is what it is is such a great uh philosophy or comment quote what have you because I think sometimes when we, people get, you know, what does they say? There's nothing to fear except fear itself. People get so upset. And my philosophy has always been, let's get a pad of paper and make a list of what we have to do. 
I mean, let's not get all upset about it. I mean, it's upsetting, yeah. sure. But let's let's figure out a plan and say, oh, should we just sit around and stew all day long? And like, gosh, what are we going to do? And I always have a pad of paper handy and let's make lists of things to get done. So that's good. So well, that's I think fun. that that's 90% of the solution is figuring out that you have a problem. Yeah. Which you're, you know, then you can, you know, if you're going to put it, not acknowledge it. Right. Then you're in trouble. So. Exactly. And it was interesting. I was listening, since I talked to you earlier, I was listening to a video that talked about how coronavirus works and into your lungs and attacks the alveoli and so forth. It was really interesting. But the, one of his biggest point ones is it's up to every one of us to be take care of ourselves. And if everybody takes care of themselves, this thing will not spread any worse than it is already. You got people out there on beaches and doing different silly things and so forth. So I right. think the message is getting across, but it certainly, uh, you know, they say charity begins at home, but take care of yourself. And if we all do that, uh, maybe this will uh, not spread as fast as they think it will. So excellent. Well, thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned, everybody, for over the next few days. I'm going to be uh, going in on Zoom and getting different people's input and uh, opinions and, and ways that they're coping as well to maybe help some other people out there. So thank you so much, Rand. I appreciate it. And we'll chat soon. Okay, Dave, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. You bet.